What's up everybody, welcome back to day six of Afterburn slash Home Shred slash Live Lean Shred. Just getting ready, getting the day started. Kai's having a little nap here. Daddy put her down. Jessica's over here rocking, rocking the dish life. <laughs> and, and I am just got this package in. I love when my homies from Roots hooks me up with my protein. So let me show you my favorite protein here. Open up the box. Make sure I don't stab myself. And here we go. Check it, check it. Guys, if you want to try a new protein powder, this guy right here from Roots, it is a non whey protein powder. So let me just show you. I've talked about it before, but focus, there we go. So this one is chocolate banana nut, paleo protein superfood. Check out what it's made of. Egg whites, sacha inchi, I think is how you pronounce that, and hemp protein. It's got your electrolyte blend in there, some superfood blend of some chia flax, some green detox, and some other goodies, all natural. Gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free, GMO-free, no coloring, no artificial ingredients, no artificial sweeteners. Guys, this is what I call a clean and healthy protein powder. So Roots is hooking up the Lively Nation as well with a 10% discount link down in the video description. Uh, but I think if you go to LivelyTV.com forward slash protein and use the coupon code LivelyTV, get yourself 10% off this bad boy as well. Boom! I like it. I like it a lot. What up everybody, we're on our way to the office right now. Got my little co-worker here. And uh, yeah, managing a kid, managing a business, managing employees of that business, managing my body, managing my health, relationships. Guys, we're in this with you, but we're finding a way to make it happen. So hopefully you guys are too, let's have a great day. It's lunchtime here in the Liveline house. Kyla's getting her apple shoush. You like that? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> I've created a monster. Babe, you should have never taught her that. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm going to show you what I'm putting together and how I sort of meal prep while I make lunch. So I guess it's like meal prepping while I meal prep, if that makes sense. Every time I cook proteins, I definitely cook more than just one meal's worth. Because, why? Because that's going to help you live lean and continue to eat well for your next couple of meals. You always want to be kind of like preemptive to what's happening next so you're never like caught in a pinch with no food options. So basically, instead of just making like enough chicken for this meal, I'm going to make a whole bunch and then we'll have leftovers for tomorrow. And at the same time, I'm making a salad. So that's, I just use my time in the kitchen really efficiently. So I have the oven preheated right now to 400 and I'm going to season up and spice up these chicken boobies and uh, I'll share with you like the amounts and stuff so you can make this and try it if you want to. This is Mrs. Dash Chicken Grilling Blend. <laughs> so simple, smells amazing. I, all I do is sprinkle a little bit of this on each chicken breast and then I like to add a little bit of like fresh ground salt and pepper on it and then I'll flip them over and I'll season the other side. All right guys, once I have these chicken breasts seasoned, all I do is lay them out on a pan like so. And you know, you can add as much seasoning as you want. If you really want a lot of flavor to your chicken, you can just go crazy and like cover it in seasoning, but I just like kind of a medium sprinkle. And seriously, it's as easy as that. All I did was Mrs. Dash, salt, pepper, and put them on a pan. You don't need anything else on that. No like sauces or creams or cheeses or anything. It's gonna taste delicious just like that. So I put it in the oven that is set to 400 and it should take like about 20 minutes, but I'll check it and cut into it to make sure when it's fully done. Kyla's got her broccoli. <laughs> Silicone broccoli shaped teether. <laughs> Alright, so Brad is chopping, he chopped the spinach. We're also adding some cucumber. We have celery and sauerkraut and then I'll show you what I make for the dressing. I'm going to make like a mustard kind of vinaigrette. So there you go, you guys have asked for more food prep stuff. It's like we're giving it to you all here. <laughs> so you guys 
better keep watching these videos, <laughs> sharing them. It's, it's, instead of like segmenting into different shows, we're just doing it all in one. All in one. Cute baby stuff, fitness and nutrition tips, all in one show. Hope you guys are enjoying. So guys, we talk about eating foods like spinach, cucumber, sauerkraut, and whatnot. These are free foods, and we talk about eating them in abundance, but when I mean, when I say abundance, I mean like as much as you want, but you don't need like to eat the whole jar of sauerkraut. You know what I mean? Sometimes people ask me like, oh really? I can like literally eat as much as I want? Like, well you can, but come on, be reasonable about it. Like you're not gonna feel good if you eat that whole jar of sauerkraut in one sitting. I would think that that would be common sense, but just wanted to point that out in case you're still confused about free foods and how much to eat. A normal amount of salad is good, okay? So for the dressing, I use this like reusable plastic container that comes from Sun Basket. I reuse those a lot. And then I'm gonna take some olive oil, put two tablespoons in there. And then I'll put one part of apple cider vinegar. I love apple cider vinegar, so healthy, and it's great for salad dressings. And then I will take, let me do one, tablespoon of Dijon mustard and then I'm gonna use this Mrs. Dash lemon pepper seasoning you can put as much as you want of that but probably about a tablespoon or a teaspoon worth of that and then I put some actual salt and pepper crack it in there make a mess everywhere and then you put the lid on and you shake it vigorously and that is how you make this mustard vinaigrette super easy so that chicken was baking at 400 for about 15 minutes and I sliced it open right here to just look at it I just slice it open to make sure that it's cooked all the way through in the fattest piece and it looks like it's good to go so easy and while that was baking I was putting together this fabulous salad and now we'll plate them to make a really yummy healthy macros on point kind of lunch one quick note about portion sizing a lot of people ask like how do you know how much of what macro to eat at which meal you know by setting up your meal plan ahead of time so you should know approximately how many ounces of protein you want to have at each meal and then when you're doing your meal prep it makes it really easy to look at the package because the weight is already on there when you're buying proteins they're almost always weighed in pounds so you can convert that to ounces and then you'll figure out how many portions that package is making you so this package was about a pound and a half of chicken it's 1.58 pounds so close enough i round things you don't have to be perfect especially when your goal is just maintenance um, anyway that comes out to about 24 ounces total so you would just divide the total number of ounces by the size of portion that you want if that makes sense so 24 divided by six so we know that this make this package just made us about four meals worth. So that happens to be really convenient because there are four breasts here, but some of them are different sizes. Like this one's really skinny and this one's really big. So you wanna divide it into four equal portion sizes. So what I like to do is just chop it all up and then you split it into four, if that makes sense. So instead of just having like one whole breast, like they're different sizes from each other, just cut them all up, divide by four, and then that's how you know how many portion sizes you have. So that's just one little hack tool for you guys to utilize in your meal prepping and make things simpler. I have to say though, if you are dialing it in, meaning you don't like the results you have right now, you don't know why, you can't figure it out, you haven't gotten your goal body yet, then do weigh things on your own scale before cooking them, portion things to be more exact, closer to your goals because you really need to learn how to eat for your goal body before you get your goal body. Once you have your goal body, maintaining it is a little bit more casual, but if you're not there yet and you want to get there and you're getting frustrated and patient and everything, then I do suggest dialing it in. That's exactly what Brad and I have done in the past in order to get to our goals. So I chopped everything up, divided it into four. One, two, three, four. Meal prep made simple. And boo, it's time to eat. Boo. Yay. <laughs> Food time. Yeah. 
All right, enjoy lunch, peeps. That one right there. Back in the gym, filming another workout for you guys. Baby Kai's ready. Brad just getting set up. Let's get this party started. Let's go. I hope you guys have been enjoying the combination of workouts, some home workouts, some gym workouts. We love hearing more details from you guys about you guys like where you like to work out. Or the home workouts. <laughs> yeah, what he said. Which do you like more? And you know, we'd love to know, um, you know, how many of you don't have access to a gym. This is important information for us to build future programs so that we can build the appropriate programs that you guys can actually use. So if most of you train from home, we'll do more home stuff. If most of you go to the gym, more gym stuff. So you let us know, and you get to decide. Are you ready to do your workout, Boo? Yeah, you're talking Woo. to your game show host. Are you ready to come on down and get shredded? <laughs> Guys, welcome to the strength portion of Live Lean After and this is training style number four in this program. So we have not done this one yet. This one is, uh, it's gonna be one of the most challenging ones because we're gonna be lifting heavier weight. So the way that we have this set up is in circuit format. Again, we got four exercises per circuit. Um, so as you can see, if you haven't downloaded the program, the PDF yet, we have total reps right here. Wait, wait, let me focus. Okay. So you see the column with Hold total on. reps? Uh, yes. Okay. So the column with total reps, that's not total reps per set. That's the total that you ah! want to get at the end of um, this circuit. So for instance, we, we want you lifting a weight that is heavy enough that you can only lift it between five to eight times. So pick a weight that is within that rep range and then you just do as many sets as it takes you to get 25 reps, 20 reps, 30 reps, and 25 reps for these exercises, okay? So it's all described in the PDF, so just make sure you read the PDF. It's not 25 reps per exercise, this is strength. So the weights go up, the reps go down. Let's jump into this. Make sure you do your warm up as always. This is a strength work, uh, workout. We want to make sure that we're nice and warm and ready to go. No injuries here, people. We're going to start over here. We're going to start with a barbell deadlift, but as I mentioned previously, there's no Olympic bar in this gym, so I'm using the uh, trap bar deadlift. If you don't have access to any barbell, you could use dumbbells for this. So let's go. So what you're gonna do with the, with the deadlift to start off, remember, oh, pick a weight that's gonna, that's gonna allow you to do it between five to eight reps. So go heavy. I could do a lot heavier weight than this, but I'm just doing the demo for you guys. So start it off. One, nice and controlled. Two, three, at this point, you should start to feel a little struggle. Four, and five, so that's enough right there, but if you got a little bit more in you, keep going. Six, seven, and eight. So at that point, you should have hit failure. If you can keep going after that, you gotta go heavier in the weight. So keep track of that, write it down, make a note. You did eight reps. You're gonna move right into the next exercise. Keeping rest periods very short here, so this is gonna be difficult. 20 second rest period. But if you need more time, take it, but just try to keep those rest periods short. Moving on into the weighted pull-up. Now, there may be a few of you guys that can't do weighted pull-up, so just do body weight. What if you they can't, can't do body can't weight? Do body weight, we show you other versions, put a rubber band on there, like a stretch band to help you. You can do a jumping one. We have a lot of, I think you have a video on. Yep, I have a video about how to do pull-ups. You could also have a workout buddy spot you. Or spot you. Mm -hmm. But if you can do, do pull-ups pull and you don't have a dip belt, which is what I prefer, you can put a dumbbell between your legs like that. Wide grip. And let's go. <laughs> Two. Remember, between five to eight reps. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Full range. Six. Eight. Nice. So there you go. Keep track. You, I did eight reps there. Our total for this circuit is 20. So I did eight of the 20. Let's move on. Incline dumbbell press. Come on over here. And I'll be honest, in this condo gym, there's not heavy enough weight for me. 
but I'll just show you with 50s. This is as high as they go in this gym. So if you don't have access to heavier weight and you can do more than eight reps with it, just go slow. So pick a slow tempo. So up, one, two, three, four, and up. So if you wanna go even slower, you can go six count. One, two, three, four, five, six, and up. But if you have access to a lot of weight, pick that weight and make sure you get between five to eight reps and no more. If you can get more, lift heavier. Okay, put the weight down. Let's head over to our last exercise in the circuit is the barbell front squat. If you have access to an Olympic bar, you know, with the squat rack, use that. Use dumbbells as well. And up. Nice. So you wanna skit your arms parallel. And rack this up. So if you don't have the, the wrist flexibility, you could also do it this way. Grab here, grab here. Put it on your shoulders. It's another way to do it. So there you go. 20 seconds in between each exercise. Get those weights up guys. Five to eight reps. Now, if they don't even have a Smith machine, would you say go with dumbbells? Dumbbells, yeah. There you go. So, back to our screen here. I can't our PDF. see it. it's too bright. <laughs> so, we have 25 reps for the deadlifts, 20 for the pull-up, 30 for the bench press, and 25 for the front squat. So, we did eight, 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 eight. So, track that from your total rep, and then you keep going into the next set. So, if you keep getting eight, um, you could, so basically just take eight from those numbers and just go until you, uh, how many sets you need to hit those numbers that we have listed here. Once you're done your last set and you hit all of those, we're gonna do the Ignited Up Mountain Climbers. 60 seconds. Do you like that? Huh. Make sure your mountain climbers aren't sloppy, people. Maintain that flat back. It's not like up like this that you see a lot of people doing. <laughs> Flat back into plank. Knee, knee. Just like that, under control. Drive those knees in, abs turned on, and breathe through it. 60 seconds. So I saw in the comments in the Facebook group, some people were doing the Ignited Up after every set. You do the Ignited Up after all of the circuits are done. So after your third circuit, that's when you do the Ignited Up. You could do it after each circuit, but it's gonna make the workout longer, okay? So take your 45 second break. Let's move on to the next, next circuit B. So I have had people who have bought this program in the past and like, 25 reps per set for strength, it doesn't make any sense. Guys, make sure you read the descriptions that you see up here. Read the workout before you go in and you do it. It's all described there word by word, like step by step. So once again, it's not 25 reps per set, it's to get to 25 reps using heavy weight, using lower reps. Once you hit 25 reps total, you're done, okay? Let's move on. It's a small investment of time to read the instructions and you'll avoid mistakes. Okay, circuit B, reverse lunge is up. We're going total 35 reps per leg. So you wanna go five to eight reps per set. Back, remember, heavy but safe. That's one and one. Two, two, three. Press through the floor to get back up. Back flat. Five, we'll go one more. Pretend like I'm bailing out right now. Ah, okay, so that was six and six. Make sure you remember that. <laughs> so let's just say for example that I had seven reps per leg and I did that for five sets, that would make me 35 reps total that you'd be done. So you can do that for five sets. Whew. 
20 second rest. This is gonna be one of the most difficult workouts for you guys if you're lifting heavy enough. Move on over to the barbell, bent over row. Take a grip just outside of hip width. Bend over flat back, neck neutral. Up, squeeze the back. Squeeze our shoulder blades together. momentum for my I wasn't coming like up like this to do the row like stationary your upper torso stationary pull it to the lower rib cage and you're done so let's take your 20 second break let's keep moving on here peeps moving on over to I think we got the bench press up just check this out flat bench press Planted in the floor. Up. Down to the chest and back up again. Spot me, Kai, spot me. Thanks for, the, thanks for the spot, guy. That was good. <laughs> All right, last exercise in the circuit. We're doing one other version of the pull-up. Narrow grip pull-ups. So we did wide grip first time. It kind of uh, give us that wider uh, look in our back. Now we're hitting narrow grip to hit the middle back area. So once again, grab your dumbbell. If you can do it, I'm gonna sure you do it this way. And up. full extension. Ah. There you go. So you're gonna complete as many sets as you need to hit the total reps. Once again, weight, keep it up. Keep the form tight. Make sure you protect your body. Once you're done that, we're gonna move on to the Tabata workout finisher. So there's no ignited up after the last circuit. This you just jump right into the Tabata. All right guys, four minute finisher, four minute Tabata. You see I got the jump rope out. 20 seconds of work, 10 second rest. First one we're gonna start off with, what was the first one again? <laughs> high <laughs> knees. <laughs> first one we're gonna start off with is high knees. 20 seconds starts now. Bring those knees up. And if these are too difficult for you, just, just do a jump version that you can do for the Tabata. So Come on, drive those knees up, you got it. So once the 20 seconds is up, you can take a break. You could just maintain the jump if you want, just to keep that cadence going. But a 10 second break, then we're moving into the one leg, two leg, one leg. So up on one leg, two legs, one leg. Two legs, one leg. Two legs, one leg. Okay, so 20 seconds doing that. Once the buzzer goes, you stop. You could look like a badass, you just keep going side to side like this. Buzzer in. Starting double unders. One. Hit the ceiling. <laughs> when the ceiling is too low. I usually do this outside. <laughs> so double unders, if you don't know what those are, the rope goes under you twice in one jump. So it's not about jumping higher, it's about Swing rotating your faster. wrist faster. Okay, so 20 seconds of those. Split jumps. And the last one is split jumps. It's like scissor jumps, kind yeah. of, yeah. It's one leg in front of the other. And what should they do if their feet keep getting caught and they keep messing up? Just keep going. Yep. You screw up, 
stop, compose yourself, and go. Do not get frustrated. You only have 20 seconds. So yeah. if these movements are too difficult, this is what you do. Just regular jumping like this. until you get really good at that. You're still going to get a good burn doing this. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off for those four. And repeat it one time, then the workout is done. Yeah. That's it, guys. Strength workout. I'm interested to know. You now had the four training styles in Live Lean Afterburn. Even though the exercises switch up for every workout, these are the four training styles. I'm interested to know in the comments below which one is the most difficult one for you and which one was the most enjoyable one for you. Let me know down there. And also, do they want to keep seeing this kind of like um, follow you through the gym style? Yeah, now that you know how it works, like how you move from one to the other, how their training style works, um, I could do the video demos. I could keep doing what I'm doing right now. You guys let me know what you want to see and I'll make it happen. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you at the next workout. Say bye. Say bye to the peeps. <laughs> it's bedtime for baby Kai. We'll see you guys later. <laughs>